Okay, the time is uh, 10 and uh, I think uh, we should uh, start this uh, webinar. So uh, everyone, uh, welcome. It's a pleasure and an honor to welcome you all to this uh, release uh, webinar. We are so excited to finally be able to reveal what we have been working on for the last couple of years. And this is so much more than just an upgrade to a new version. This is a release of a new Renew software that will take us one step closer to the vision that we are having in Public 360 of improving work life for public servants and the daily life of the citizens. So on behalf of the whole Public 360 organization, I once more welcome you to this webinar. Today, we will talk about the journey we are on, our high level product strategy, and we will give you some sneak peeks and insights into our new renew product. There will be demos and of course the chat will be open during the session for you to launch any questions. So let's get started. Thomas, can you click the next slide please? All software companies have a past, but not all software companies have a future. And who will disappear and who will survive is not coincidental. Public 360 has a proud, strong history. This year, 2024, it is 40 years since the company was founded. And we have a lot of great achievements together with you that took place during these years. But it's important to have in mind that what took us here won't necessarily take us there. You can go to the next slide, uh, Thomas. And we are on a journey and we have a great plan. From the starting point in 2019, focus on the quality in the product and securing a future-proof framework. We have strengthened the strategic capabilities we have in Public 360 and we have onboarded new competence area necessary to build a product that you will know to use for the years to come. And the last year we have worked these new competence areas into the roadmap and the product like we have done on the archive inspector or of a new design framework and building these capabilities on top of the already strong case management framework in public 360 will result in a much better user experience for all of you and that is what it is all about moving forward entering 2024 we are launching our renew product and more on that will come in a couple of minutes can you click the next slide, Thomas? First, a little update on our high level product strategy. And uh, it's always me uh, that is getting the hard uh, slides to, to explain, but I will try. Because up until now, we have developed one product and that product has been deployed both to our on-prem customers and to our cloud customers. As earlier announced, when releasing 5.17, that will end and we will separate out version five. As, as, and as you can see on the bottom picture, that has now happened. And we are in Q1 releasing version 5.18 LTS, where LTS stands for long-term support. In this version, we have backported the technology as earlier communicated, and the product is now on the version that will be supported until 2028. There are no concrete roadmap for version 5 currently, and the focus is to keep version 5 secure and compliant. And of course, we will guarantee to hold the knowledge needed to support all of you on version 5 in, until the end of life in 2028. Moving to the picture on the top, and this is the focus of today, because today we are opening a new chapter in our history. We are releasing a brand new version of Public 360, and what, what up until now has been known as Next Generation Public 360, or the V6 version, will finally get a name and a face. The Renew product will gradually be fueled with all the new cool stuff that we have been preparing during the five last years. And all of you on the Renew product will benefit from this moving forward, giving you a class leading case management system. We will start 
the rollout on our cloud platforms now in Q1, and the product will be available for local deployment in Q2. Then, finally, a great thanks to all, to a lot of you that are following in this uh, webcast. For so many of you have participated in helping us shaping what is the user experience should be when we are building the new software. The feedback you have provided has guided us in the right direction. Let's explore together also in the coming years, because that's how we get a software that you will love. OK, then we are getting there. Close your eyes and imagine a product that has superior user experience that are utilizing class leading technology and bring the support you need to be efficient in your workday. And that in the future will be your most valuable and trusted colleague, always proposing the best solutions and guiding you flawless in your daily work. On behalf of the whole Public360 team, I proudly present you Public360 Online. Please, Thomas, click to the next slide. I think you need to open the sound on your computer, Thomas. Really sorry, this worked very well uh, when we had uh, <laughs> when we had the driver run on on this. So this is uh, typical that what happens when we going live. Yeah, let's give it one more try. Our new release of Public 360 will introduce our new design for the user interface and our inclusive process support ensuring adaptability to diverse work environments and individuals. It enables you to work from wherever you like, how you like. Public 360 Online supports Nordic democracy. It easily provides access to public documents for anyone who is eager to learn more. With no barriers for any age or technical skills, with inbuilt flexibility and accessibility, you can simply pick up where you left off wherever and however you prefer, so seamlessly, you'll hardly notice the transition. Our clients are unique, so are their needs. Convenience varies for all of us, and it is your decision to define what convenient means to you and your organization. Shape your public 360 to best suit your organization's needs by customizing your view to display precisely what is required on the screen. Upcoming Public 360. In the future, Public 360 will feature intelligent auto classification and data distribution. This automation ensures everyone stays on track with tasks, responsibilities, action points, and progress, allowing you and your team to anticipate the next meeting confidently. All of the processing will automatically be done for you so your team can focus on what is important. Public 360 will assist you and your team obtaining a clear visual overview of your organization supporting measurable quality enhancements. You'll be able to empower your team to explore the data with a new perspective, supporting you and your organization to deliver sustainable decisions. In the future, you can confidently trust that your data on crucial matters is always up to date. It will allow you to have the right data in the right place, in the right format, at the right time. And if you've been away for a while, no problem. Welcome back, Lee. Would you like to quickly see the updates that have happened since you were here last time? Or would you prefer to start with a task right away? Oh, hey, 
I want to do that. That report I usually do. No problem. Shall I create it based on the notes from the last meeting? Yes, please. Done. Shall I send it to the steering group? Yes. We improve the working life of public servants and the daily life of citizens. Thank you. Just put the next, uh, Thomas. Whew, it worked. That was so. <laughs> that was a relieving. Um, Okay, as you can see, uh, we are on a new uh, journey and uh, Public 360 online uh, is available uh, now and uh, it will be rolled out uh, to the customers uh, that are on our cloud services, meaning public cloud and domestic uh, cloud. That uh, work has uh, started uh, for uh, local uh, deployment, meaning that you can have it on your in your own environment on, or if you have some, some hosting uh, partner that uh, version will be available in Q2 this uh, year. So it's already here. And as you saw, uh, the product will uh, gradually be fueled uh, with new uh, kind of uh, functionality as we go uh, along. So this is uh, a continuous uh, process uh, that will start now and will happen and continue over the next, uh, next uh, years. So uh, by that, uh, I will hand it over uh, to my colleague, uh, Andre, that will talk more about uh, some of the things that are, have happened uh, under the hood and that is also kind of now implemented in the new Renew platform. Andre. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Bent. And thank you all for joining. Uh, as Bent mentioned, I'm here today to talk about uh, design in, uh, in 360. Uh, I am the head of design. And, uh, and now in the next 10 to 15 minutes, I'll talk to you about what I, what is actually changing in our new release. So if we can go to the next slide. So one of the main improvements that we are doing is that we are implementing now a design system in our product. So a design system is a set of reusable components and practices that are customizable to our customers and user needs. So I hope you can see these slides. Um, what is important that you actually can um, take into account. So if you ever have used both a Google product or an Apple product, you have seen that both the UI and the UX has changed. So this will happen the same for us. We'll have our own design system. And this is very important for us, is that the design system will allow us to scale both the good practices across the products but most importantly, improve on the user experience. Next slide, please. The design system and the, the and the, um, will be uh, across all of our offerings. So this will mean that you will have a new design in Public 360, Plan and Build 360, eArchive 360, and Business 360. What's also important to mention, please go to the next slide, is that the design will be changed in continuous releases. This means that you won't receive all the updates up front, but you will receive them on a regular basis. This will allow you to onboard you and your team and to adapt to the changes slowly and gradually, but also will allow us, the design team, to improve the collaboration with you and understand what is working for you. During next slide, please. So during this period that we have been developing the design of our products, we have talked with hundreds of users. And we have received feedback and I want to share four uh, feedbacks that we have received. So if we can uh, please move to four clicks and then we can show the four slides. So one of our customers has given us the feedback that it's now easier to understand what's going on and the new screen looks fresh. Another user has said that the file previewer is now more user-friendly and is pushed forward. 
Another user has said that they love the new features and how they are grouped together. But the most important feedback that we have received from our users is that they now feel more in control and inefficient using Public 360. So if we can go to the next slide, what has changed in our product? As I mentioned, this will be a gradual process. And in the new release, what will change will be colors, fonts, and icons. And those will be visible across the full interface. And those will include charts, message, labels, checkboxes, and texts. And those are kind of the first building blocks for us. We need to have those in place so we can scale the system across and tackle bigger problems as we move forward. Next slide, please. Also, what you'll be able to see soon is that we will also have updated the interactions. Those will include selections, over, disable, drag, and much more. So you both will look that the, the UI has changed, the user interface has changed, but also the user experience will start, uh, will start changing gradually. So when we combine these two elements of UI and UX, user interface and user experience, we get to the first screen. So can we move pass to one slide forward, please? So in this image, there is a quick overview of how the new product will appear. We will transform both the product on the user interface and the user experience. So this will be a new update that we will receive and we want to show you a quick video on actually how does it work. So can we go to the next slide, please, and run the video? Welcome to the new Public 360 Online. The overall appearance is lighter and modern thanks to the new design system that introduces a visual language that consists of colors, fonts and icons. The entity icons have been updated to match the overall visual changes, yet they are clearly recognizable. The interaction mechanisms, such as different kinds of input fields, buttons, tabs, and other components, have also been updated to guide users' attention to the right things. The components are based on Fluent UI, Microsoft's well established framework. So, as you can see, we keep the good patterns uh, that we had in the past, but at the same time, we are looking forward and improving what needs to um, be improved. So, this is important that our design system will be evolving, uh, but it will be evolving together with our customers and our users, and we'll be learning how to both grow in coherence across our products, but also offer a better user experience for all of you. So, with that, um, I think we have uh, just one quick slide that shows how uh, new aspects we are working on and will be upcoming in the next uh, release. And I'll pass back to Thomas that will talk to us more about our product vision. Thomas. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm Thomas Messel, Public 360 uh, Product Manager. And uh, very nice to see the new uh, look and feel of Public 360 Online, Andrea. I think it will take us one step towards our vision. And the vision of Public 360 is to improve working life for public servants and daily life for citizens. And to help us achieve that, we have made five vision pillars. It's proactive decision support, automated and transparent, intuitive design, expert domain knowledge, and sustainable and ethical. And while uh, Andre has shown us already that we have taken steps uh, towards our vision when it comes to intuitive design, 
I think that the functional uh, highlights will also show that we have taken functional steps towards uh, our vision. So we'll start with proactive decision support. The approval process in a case management system is very important for you customers to make your decisions. And the two uh, latest years, we have worked on a new approval workflow experience. And now it is completed in Public 360 Online. So now you have better control on the approval and you do it more easily. Our notification center is proact uh, proactively helping you users to do uh, your case handling. And we have several imp improvements in the notification center. We have uh, notifications on to the two distribution lists. You can get notifications on inactive cases and on searches that you have made or are globally made. And if you are an administrator, you can also get notified if a 360 job, for instance, uh, the format converter fails, you can get a notification about that. So a lot of proactive support in the notification center. If we go to automated and transparent, we want to help you automate uh, uh, steps that you used to manually do. And one example of that is the automatic archiving of emails. So now you can totally automate the whole process from getting the email from the email program into the unregistered document list and doing the uh, processing, the, uh, the archiving process on that email and finalize the archiving. So I want to quickly show you a little demo on how that works. Of course, it's not that much to show because the whole point is that it's going to be automatic instead of manual, right? But I can show you how you set it up and how it looks when documents are archived. So if you go into the uh, 360 administrator, you can configure your email archiving. On the screen now, we see the configuration and we see uh, a lot of properties where you can set, for instance, what email account that you want to get the emails from. But some properties we will take a closer look at, and those are the ones that are like uh, speci specific for the archiving process. So here you can say that when I Im import this email, I want uh, the document responsible to be a certain person, for instance, Nikita in this instance. And you can, for this emails from this account, you can set case default value sets and document default value sets. And that means that when emails from this account uh, is going to be archived, they will have certain levels on the document. And if you are going to create a new case to archive uh, the email, you can also put in uh, certain uh, values on cases. And at the bottom here, we see uh, like an interesting property. Here you can tell the archiving process what to look for to be able to archive uh, finalized. In this case, we have set document number, but you can have several, you can choose between several patterns and I'll ex exemplify that a little bit. For instance, you can, you can look for like generic patterns, like in this case, sequence number. So here you have an email that has a subject that contains a sequence number. So what the archiving process does is to check if this sequence number is connected to a case in Public 360. And if it is, the email is archived on that case. 
So that is one pattern. Another pattern is to look for the document number. And here you can say that the document number is in the body. So uh, uh, the system can look both in the subject and in the body for things to recognize. So if the system, if the archiving process finds a case corresponding to this document number in public 360, it will add this email to that case. If it doesn't find it, it will create a new case. And in our example, we have a document number that is put in to the subject. And when the archiving process has done its work, it will look like this in the yeah, in, in public 360 online. You see that the document has been uh, connected to the case with the correct case number. So this is how easy it is to automatic archive emails in public 360 online. OK. We'll go, uh, we'll talk more about automated and transparent. In 2023, Archive Inspector had its breakthrough. It, can, it, it has provided uh, several of our customers to be able to be more transparent and at the same time with better control. And our customers have provided feedback on how to use uh, Archive Inspector and make it even better and more usable. And we have taken those requests into account and are now uh, launching uh, uh, a new um, uh, the Archive Inspector with better uh, with better functionality in Public 360 online. Public 360 online is a very good uh, case management platform. And one of the things that makes it a great platform is our contact register. And some of our customers have asked for cascading updates. And that means that if a contact is updated uh, in the contact register, then open cases and documents will be updated as well on, on uh, uh, open cases and documents. And Pano Kiskula uh, product manager in Public 360 will show us how that can be done. Uh, so take it away, uh, Pano. Thank you, Thomas. Um, so cascading update for contact properties, a new feature in Public 360 online. And as Thomas explained, this feature works so that when you update the properties for a contact in 360, the changes are also automatically updated for all cases and outbound documents into which the updated contact has been connected. So I'll explain this in, in further detail. So here you can see that we have a case document which is titled Lorem Ipsum and it is an outbound document and as you can see um, for this document a contact person named John Doe has been selected as the recipient. Can you go to the next slide Thomas please? So if you would go and see the overview for this contact person John Doe then in this example we can see that currently for John the address is Hill Street 1 and John's email address is currently john.doe at kriskebusiness.com. So that's what we have at the moment but if we would start editing properties for this contact person John Doe then if we go to the next slide. And if in this example we would uh, go into the address tab and for example change John's address into Hill Street 99 
and then if you would go into the communication tab and also change John's email address to be john.02 at chriskybusiness.com. And now when we press the finish button in the dialog window, then the magic starts happening and the system will automatically update these changes for all connected open cases and outbound documents. Um, great, if you can go into the next slide, then we can see what that actually means for you. So back um, in the lorem ipsum outbound document um, and dispatch is of course one of the functionalities in 360 where it is especially important to have up-to-date contact information for your documents. So now if we would push the dispatch button for this lorem ipsum document then of course the dispatch document dialog window opens and of course John Doe is listed here in this window because John is the recipient for this outbound document and if we would use the view properties option for viewing what values John has at the moment for this lorem ipsum document then we can see that the values have been automatically updated by the system if we can go to the next slide Thomas. So this is the properties of John Doe at the moment for this lorem ipsum document. So of course, then here we have John's up-to-date address, Hill Street 99. And we also have up-to-date email address for John, john.do2 at chriskybusiness.com. And of course, what this means now that you can be uh, completely confident that you will be able to successfully deliver this document to this recipient, John Doe. So this is how it works and as I said it works for open cases and outbound documents which are in the reserved status. And we support all three main contact types in 360. That's the enterprise, and the contact person, the private person um, as well. And the fields which we update during this cascading update are the name of the contact, the address of the contact, uh, the email address of the contact and the phone number as well. So then if you can go into the next slide. So that's how it works from functional perspective. And this feature is quite easy to take into use. So here in 360 admin, we have added a new configuration setting. And this new setting is titled update contact properties. By default, the value for this setting will be no, but if you just switch that value to yes, then the magic will automatically start happening for you. And that's it. That's the cascading update for contact properties in a nutshell. Um, thank you. And I guess it's now back to you, Thomas. Thank you, Paolo, for a good uh, demonstration. So, Let's have a look at intuitive design. The uh, unregistered document list becomes a more and more important uh, view in Public 360. And that is because we get so much data from so many different sources that we have to organize and distribute in the correct way. And we have multiple enhancements in the unregistered document list that Willie will show us later. Uh, we want our uh, customers to be able to collaborate in the best way they can. And we know that you customers are using, a lot of you are using SharePoint, and a lot of you are also using Teams for collaborating. And we want to make good integrations that make it that make it easy uh, to, to collaborate, but at the same time make it very easy to archive to Public 360. And in Public 360 online, we release a new SharePoint integration that does exactly that. It looks very similar to our Teams integration. And talking about the Teams integration, we have done several enhancements in that module as well. Guess the most uh, the most thing that you will 
uh, that you will not uh, notify is that uh, the Teams integration is snappier now. So like when you when you uh, use it, it feels even more uh, snappy than it did before. Another big improvement in the sidebar, uh, uh, in the email sidebar, Outlook sidebar, is the possibility to drag and drop emails into the unregistered document list. And Willie will show you th that later as well. We go out over to the expert domain knowledge. We know that you customers want to, uh, to utilize the data in public 360 to an even greater extent. And we have now uh, released a new and improved global search. So now uh, Willi Koch, uh, product manager in public 360, will take over and demo also the global search. So take it away, Willi. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's then start by sharing. Going here. Yes, so um, this. Oh, no, is it sharing? Uh, I need to click one again here. Uh, yeah, it's always there and there. Let me share that one. All right. Now it's visible, right? Yes, so this, um, the unregistered documents uh, web part has, um, in previous versions, is it was used for only a few things, uh, maybe scanning and some manual uh, registration. But as we see now, um, it's being used for automatic archive emailing. It's still used for scanning. And now we also have extended it uh, to be used for a um, new drop zone in the um, in the Outlook sidebar. So uh, as we uh, so this screen uh, is uh, from uh, from Outlook, and uh, in the bottom right corner we see now there's a new drop zone that you can configure either globally for all users or for um, uh, for your own uh, in your own settings, which then allows you to drag either one or multiple emails from, from your Outlook um, onto that, and then it will uh, register those um, with, if you can then add a few um, selected uh, items uh, like access group and responsible. And then when you click save, it will then um, finish here. And then it will then say, Obviously, it will close the window, but then it will just say number of emails imported. And um, the reason why we also mentioned this access group is because we have now added um, and improved uh, the, the access matrix setup for the use for the, with the import archive or the, uh, this uh, functionality. So once you then have archived these, it will then come out into the new unregistered documents. Uh, view or web part, uh, as we say. Uh, this is then based on the new uh, the React framework, so it has a lot of functionality that was uh, not possible before. And but uh, also as part of this, because we are improving and adding a lot of lot of new views for different parts of uh, Public 360 Online. So we have then also added this support to switch back to the the old page. So if you uh, if you think that no this is way too new I don't like new things then you can switch back to the old page uh, by clicking here and it will remember your option but of course we hope that you will keep using our new uh, view because you can here uh, you can select um, multiple documents and you can do changes as I saw and um, you can also add uh, more columns to see more document or more fields, more meta fields in this column. So uh, with user configurability, which was not something we had um, in the previous version. Uh, so I will also show this uh, in the demo soon. Um, 
And uh, another feature that is uh, quite um, uh, used quite a lot in, in Public 360, we have introduced a new global search, uh, which we have tested in many versions. But seeing as this is probably the functionality that is used the most uh, by all users every day, we had to make sure it was ready for a release. So uh, with this new search, uh, it's now possible to also add uh, table columns uh, on a custom user defined level. And you can also add filters, uh, which you can then click and instantly filter the search result. And also, if you see here, this uh, sort by um, drop down will also make it possible to sort uh, by created date by, by certain fields. So it's easy in case you, you don't want um, this, the score to show um, at the top, but maybe the, the last created uh, case or document. So I will now go over to a little demo. And right, so here this is our newly upgraded uh, demo environment. Um, and this is then the uh, web part for unregistered documents. So let's say I have emailed uh, or archived some emails here. And then you can, if you need to do more changes, you can then start uh, modifying here. And you can see that this bulk edit uh, button became available. And here we can then click and reassign and add access groups and so on. So let's say this. And I can say, uh, uh, yeah, let's take, uh, I'll just set myself. And, and then you can also set the due date. Uh, so, and then once you save, it will then uh, update those, hopefully. Uh, let's, Let's just pretend it didn't need to refresh because it's been sitting too long. So, um, right, but, and then you also have the possibility here to add columns. Uh, let's say we want to say to see um, uh, notes. Then you can add that here on the onto the left side, and then you can move this up. So I want to see it uh, here. Once you save it will then update uh, immediately and you will then you feel so and this is user configurable so uh, through um, your administrator tools so um, and then uh, the next one then um, oh yeah and also then to show you can then click here and you will switch back to the to the previous version which now looks very outdated <laughs> we think so uh, yeah, so that's a that's a nice feature, which you will probably we will we'll see in in many views that we introduce. Um, so it's possible to to get feedback. Uh, and the new search, uh, as you can see, we have gotten a larger uh, global search uh, intro uh, in uh, input field. So let's say if I do a search for just my initials, it will then instantly show this. And we have now, um, we, we no longer show this um, all uh, um, field where it, we, we try to display all, um, all these entities at the same time. So we need to click on each to see the result. But as you can see, it's, it's very uh, snappy. And you can then also sort for some selected fields like created date, uh, ascending and descending. And here on the left side, we have uh, filters. So let's say we just want to see uh, those documents that have journal status uh, approved. So then we choose uh, status here. And then you see this on the on the left side. So I will then click. Uh, let's yeah, let's go for officially recorded. And you now see it, it instantly filtered on this. Uh, on this column. So this is uh, only possible with the new uh, user UI components that is only available in Public 360 online. So um, 
yeah, that was it. Oh, I also have to show uh, the new file uh, relation, uh, file preview. So let's just do a quick search for, um, let's see, um, NATO unclassified. We will then see, uh, we'll get the hit here. And if you hover the mouse here, you will see that it, it did found, find this inside this file. But what is new here is that when you click this, it will then load the file previewer and instantly highlight inside the, 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 the file where it found this phrase. So here in this header and down here. So this is, uh, this is great to quickly get an overview over uh, what you found uh, inside the file. So just a few tidbits, a lot more uh, going on in the background here, but uh, we, that have to be for uh, for another time. So back to you, Thomas. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Willie. Great, uh, great demo and a lot of a uh, lot of good stuff coming in public 360 online. So one of the most important things in software is, of course, product quality. And uh, in Public 360, we have increased uh, quality a lot the latest three years. Uh, if you compare it two for three years ago, we now have only one third of the bugs that we had back then, and the quality is getting better and better for each release. So we work, will work hard to make that a trend also in the future. Sustainable and ethical. Uh, our most complex customers uh, have uh, asked for more extended stand-in functionality to be able to be sure that everything goes uh, according to plan, even though somebody is away. So we have made a new and extended stand-in module with a lot of good functionality for stand. -in. Accessibility and security are uh, things that we know that you customers are uh, very interested in and think uh, uh, is very important. And we have several improvements uh, in the accessibility and security area in Public 360 online. One thing that I especially want to mention is the possibility for our uh, integration API, SIF, to minimize uh, data so that we can, on a fine grain level, decide which integration that is going to get access to which type of data. These were, of course, just highlights. And if you want to go and see what other things that are coming in Public 360 online, please uh, visit our release notes. Now I want to give the word to Product Manager uh, Morten Jensen, who is going to talk about what are our main focus in 2024. So over to you, Martin. Thank you, Thomas. Yes, so um, <clears throat> we've been talking obviously a lot now on uh, what we have released, um, both on on the, the um, user interface and the user experience side, and we've just been seeing a lot of how this act also manifests itself in in new and improved functionality. And now I'll guide you through some highlights of um, our ambitions for um, for 2024. Um, and um, I would like actually to sort of to to talk about three different initiatives. And let me just be clear: this is not the sum of everything that we do, but maybe something that is very important both to us, but also. Uh, to our customers. First one is accessibility. Um, and maybe let's just talk about what does accessibility actually mean? Um, accessibility is 
how the system supports uh, users in a way that is intuitive, um, uh, simple to use, that supports people with uh, uh, different types of, of um, uh, impediments, uh, like for instance, um, um, uh, visual impairment. Um, and it's a way of ensuring that the solution can work for a multitude uh, type of, of, of users. Um, this is hugely important. First of all, um, as many of you know, there are already now legislative uh, requirements for this in, 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 in various countries, um, typically on the type of, uh, on the part of the solution that is accessible to the public, uh, to the citizens. Um, but it is also becoming more and more um, important for internal uh, use. So we have established an entire accessibility program um, where we do um, testing internally. Uh, we have established um, a, a sort of a, a, a based on the compliance uh, reports that we have done. We have established short and, and, and midterm roadmap. Um, we are in in the in in, uh, in in the last process of actually also updating our both development and design process to ensure that we cater both for what we call accessibility by design, meaning that everything that we do is uh, where accessibility is actually considered already at design time, but also how do we work with quality assurance? Um, so we not only design this, but we actually also test this before uh, releasing. This is also about formal education. This is um, a, a different field and we will, we have already certified um, quite a lot of our internal employees. This will continue. We are also looking at um, more formal external tests and partnerships, um, uh, ensuring that, for instance, things like screen reader software actually works um, and, and is, is um, um, is truly uh, integrated and supported into the system. Um, this is about test automation. It might, might sound, sound boring, but but it is really important for us that everything that we do, the same way as we, we test for normal bugs, we are also testing for um, accessibility. Um, and then, of course, it, everything when we're talking about accessibility and 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 better. Uh, more supportive uh, user experience. This is linked, obviously, to the section that we, we that Andre went through earlier in this presentation on the new uh, design framework. Second thing I would like to highlight is um, the year ahead is really focused on user experience on a, a, a very large scale. So obviously, we just talked about accessibility. We also talked about uh, the design program and the, the, the design system. Um, and we will move further into how incorporation of the design system can lead to more consistent, more, more user-friendly um, solutions for the users. We will be um, releasing um, what we call full flex UI, which is a way of configuring um, case creations and 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 and, and, and case details uh, individually for for the customers. And why is this important? Well, it's important because this allows our customers to tailor the solution to their specific need and still remain on standard. Uh, so you get the best of both worlds. We will also uh, be redesigning uh, the Information Act Request module, which actually works fairly well, but it is a fairly complicated module. Uh, so this is about really providing a much better uh, experience in, especially in the redaction, um, slotting as it's called in, in, in Norwegian and Swedish, um, um, and also how you do approval in a way that is more intuitive. We will be looking at the, the, the board manager solution. So we are in, in the discovery phase here, um, um, giving more um, flexibility in the way that we, for instance, do document production and, 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 and the way that the solution actually supports the individual roles. Um, then we have the OpenGov solution or uh, OpenGov solutions. Um, which is a new uh, suite of solutions that that combines um, 
the three existing modules, uh, which is which is um, uh, open gov cases, open gov meetings, and public journal into into one suite. Um, this enables a much better user interface, both for the citizens who, who will be able to do um, um, search a lot easier, but also you get much better control as um, um, as an organization on what is actually published. And obviously, the, our aim is that this enables you to publish more and relieving you of the burden of having to deal with uh, individual access requests. Um, and then I mentioned the full flex UI, and this, of course, will also uh, continue into case and document uh, redesign. And again, the reason or the, the background is the same to provide better uh, user experience, more intuitiveness, but also solutions that uh, feels more relevant for the individual organization. Then lastly, um, uh, artificial intelligence is obviously important um, to everyone and, 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 and us included. Um, we have released, as many of you are aware, our Archive Inspector module. We will continue to work on this uh, throughout uh, 24, which also includes um, new capabilities uh, for doing uh, things like health analysis um, inside, inside the documents. We will be working on management reporting, but I think maybe uh, what has really happened the past 12 months is really the emergence and the maturity of generative AI which is also why we're dedicating a large volume of our development capacity actually to explore different types of AI or generative AI options. Uh, so we will be releasing what we call help chat uh, co-pilot, but also um, we are looking into many other areas for uh, generative AI support. Um, we have um, a, 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 an annual event called Innovation Week, which is um, taking place in March this year. And everyone, the entire organization, will be working on various aspects of generative AI. So that's also why the roadmap right now is a little bit um, um, sort of it's not uh, super concrete, but this is by intent. This is because we know that we will spend our collective brain capacity to do innovation and, and research over the next months. And of course, we want to ensure that we actually have space on our roadmap to take the good ideas that we get our internally, but also with you, our customers, and, and provide time, uh, a space on the roadmap for this. So those were the, the, the main highlights uh, of um, uh, of the strategy for the upcoming year, um, which also leads us to the end of this presentation. Um, so on behalf of uh, the entire uh, Public360 team, um, thank you for attending. Um, we have tried our very best to answer questions throughout this session. If we have not managed to, to, to respond to your question, we will do so uh, and it will be published. Uh, uh, so so uh, you, are, you are not forgotten. Thank you so much. Um, have a fantastic day and I wish you great uh, fun and pleasure with uh, the new system. Thank you.